She's nearly one. <laughs> Wednesday. Um, it's one more week till the school holidays, so um, I'm pretty stoked about that. Pretty shattered, to be honest. And um, I've got another bit of a cold, so um, it's not going to be the best review. Um, I've already had half this. This is a great big, uh, big bomber, big 750 mil from Aiden at 14.90. Um, last week, I would have said that I reviewed his pot kettle black, but in fact, it was Chris at No Quarter Brewing, or I should say. Um, Chris at grain to glass .nz, um, runs a homebrew shop it was his one but um, none of them were labelled one had PKB Aiden's one had nothing anyway Chris's one was fantastic and um, yeah bear in mind I've already had half this um, almost slid over walking to the shops before in the mud Calcop it's got the best roading in New Zealand and the shittest footpaths anyway this is the pot kettle black um i'm not sure i think it's got sovin and cascade in it um as i said i've got a cold the sniffer is not great but um this is meant to be a robust porter i'm definitely getting black ipa for this this is got a massive rose character without any hint of harshness or astringency um a super big hit of hop juice Some good malt. Um, I'm not sure what percent it is. I'm getting a little bit of booze off it. Um, I think it's sort of um, bigger than the original. Uh, but this is a top drop. As I say, aroma, I could give it a go. But I can't smell nothing, man. Um, yeah, you got to sort this nose out. Um, top drop. This is from Aiden, who, of course, won the Mike's Brewery. Um kind of homebrew champs last year. In other words, he got his um, beer, the Surf Spot X, which hopefully you'll see in New Zealand stores. Uh, that That's a great beer. Um, wicked artwork. I'll put a little picture of it here. Cracking beer. And Aiden obviously knows what he's doing when it comes to uh, black IPAs. So full credit. Uh, I need to maybe get a recipe of him too because um, this is a superb drop, Aiden. When I talk about juice, I'm still getting that berry, raspberry, blueberry, blackberry, and uh, yeah, you've done a stellar job on this. Speaking of black IPAs, I'm going to brew it Wally Fix Black IPA in the holidays, and if I hadn't mentioned, I'm on holiday soon for two weeks, and I've got a couple of beers to do for some weddings, so uh, best mate John is getting married, and um, we kind of came up with a a loose plan to do a couple of brews so we're going to do a lager but we're looking at a bit of a Chinese theme so we're going to put um, probably some lemongrass maybe some star anise in the lager and we're going to do a lychee pale ale I think that's the plan so he's going to help me do that it's going to come around on Monday I think depending on whether I get to go fishing or all that sort of business and uh, brew up those two what else Bit of hardware's turned up from China, but um, I've got to decide whether I'm going to silver solder or whether I'm going to weld. We've got a new welder turning up in the holidays. A new TIG welder. That's exciting. Last time I had a go with a TIG welder, I didn't really have the patience, but um, yeah, I think I will I think I will learn the art of patience on the TIG welder, and um, I'm real keen to give TIG welding a go. I've been threshing the MIG this week, so um, yeah, I want to do some more stainless business. Not a lot else. Um, SJ Poor, I have officially paid the entrance fee, so I'm going to be doing that. So I might even brew up a test batch or so in the holidays. I might start with that uh, pawn round, which is the basically the Columbus Cascade Centennial Pale Ale of some description. Not sure what I'm going to do for the second beer, but I think it's going to be black of some description, and then maybe some sort of big belge for the last kind of big beer. Anyway, enough for everything from me. I've got a big lager brew day. Um, and yeah, 
I might show you a bit of a lager tasting at the end. That's after I've sat back and I've enjoyed this bad boy. Cheers. So we've got about nine kilos of grain, all sorts of stuff in there. Pilsner, Carahel, uh, Gladiator. Um, what else is in there? A little bit of Munich and some acid malt. Biggest uh, grain bills I've had since last time. Last time, time before. Anyway, that peanut butter porter was a double batch in two separate pots. But today, I'm going to get that nine kilos into the big keg. So um, I got a keg a little while ago um, off an online auction. Dirty old trade me. And um, I don't know if you can see there, I have um, flitted up that triclover um, to, it was a quarter inch socket that's already weld on there, so basically that's an insert. I'll show you that later. Uh, just got to make sure, obviously, that um, this has been threaded in. You don't want too much shred tape on it. Um, well, you do to seal it, but um, obviously I want a good connection to the pot so she's safely grounded. And, um, yeah, this had a thermo well and a sight gauge, so I've just used that thermo well hole for my ball valve. So, yeah, we're going to try and get, um, if not 40 litres, very close to it in this pot and then maybe lick it back a bit. So I've dyed in, and um, not too bad, about 67 or so, and um, filled up the HLT, and yeah, trouble is, I, um, I've drained all this water for the mash water, and um, I've got to top up and get that back to temp, which will be a little while, but um, thank goodness I hit my strike water temperature, so um, once this is back up to temp, we can start recirculating. Got to get a pid, man. And in goes my water additions, which um, I'm just halving. Half of the mash, half of the boil. So a quick little pH reading, 5.4. Was 5.3 before, but um, pretty much there. That was half a kilo in this batch of acidulated malt. And obviously a little bit of uh, salt additions. So in the ballpark, um, we've been mashing for about an hour now. Just starting to look to ramp it up, and um, as you can see there, she's pretty clear and pretty pale, which is what we want out of our Pilsner slash Lager. Alright, so we get a transfer. Um, I've never actually had a decent sight gauge actually pop markings, I just normally use the rivets. Um, what a rat bag. Anyway, we've got, um, heading up towards 25 litres, according to the previous owner of this pot. Um, so yeah, what we'll do is we have um, been boiling that, I've drained most of the HLT and I've just topped that back up with um, roughly 20 litres and then um, yeah we're still, I'll just turn it off but slowly sparging the rest of that grain bill and um, unlike last time I'm going to do a wee check ahead of time, and I'm probably aiming for roughly the 1040s, somewhere around there. No idea doing this double batch. Yes, I've calculated it, but um, who knows. And I suppose if I'm a bit too high, I can lick it back, and that will make it a little bit easier to boil. But um, I've seen Aiden from 1490 boil in one of these kegs, and um, he quite often gets it right to the gunnels, and um, almost to boil over. So we're trying to avoid that today. Alright, so while I'm um, heating up the HLT again, that last bit of sparge water, man, if you ever build a rig, just um, get get a bigger HLT than you think you need, because um, it's a pain in the ass to have to wait for that. Anyway, in goes my salt additions, nice and fizzy, not too much, because it is a pilsner, and I'm on lovely rainwater, so it doesn't really need too much. Um, here's hoping. And uh, yeah, see you at um, 60 minute boil time where I might chuck some hops in finally. This is bloody boring. So it's still a little while before we get hop break, but um, yeah, I'll decide to stop about um, 40 litres and um, hopefully we won't get a boil over. And like I've been doing last couple of brews, um, I'll end up um, saving any kind of residual, um, just low 
sugar wort and um, I'll save that and freeze it for some yeast starters because um, DME is so expensive. So yeah, it's a nice unhopped wort that I can um, reboil at a later date and get some of those lovely liquid yeast started up. Those out of date liquid yeast that I got for a bargain. Just call me Bargain Bin Laden. So I've just sorted out um, my hop additions. Um, I managed to use up all, pretty much all the um, open packs I had. So um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff in there. Um, I'll show it to you on screen. But um, a big load of Rako, Pacifica, and Rewaka. So yeah, big load in there. I'm gonna go for um, basically because I want to mow the lawns and um, a bit paranoid about bitterness. Um, so we've got a half hour, a 15, a 5, and um, a big ass whirlpool of about 100 grams. So hopefully, it should be juicy. And um, with the leftover pack of Pacifica. It served me well, I will uh, probably dry hop. So it's almost getting into IPL territory. Except um, it is a true Lager slash Pacifica. First hop drop. I've had an hour boil, so that's just your 30 minute. 15 minute hop drop. With the old faithful Irish moss and White Labs yeast nutrient. That's a bit more like it, a bit more green in there. And then goes our five minute edition. It's like a freaking snowstorm. Hints of green. Get that stirred in, and our uh, next hop drop will be a big whirlpool. Which I might whirlpool from the bottom, seeing I've got a dip tube in there. And uh, no filter this time. So we're just going to draw from the side of that domed bottom. Okay, so that's holding steady at. Um, why do I always do that? It's 80 degrees, so um, we're going to drop it like it's hops. Get a bit of a manual spin. I'm doing something a little bit different, as I said before. I've got a, a dip tube that's at a right angle, so it's kind of going around the pot. And I'm actually managing to siphon from the top there, that top hose. So that top hose is drawing off the top, and we're all pulling at the bottom. And um, it looks like I'm getting a little bit of directional kind of wheel pulling, so yeah. We'll spoon it up, get it whirling, leave it at 80, and um, leave it there for about 15 minutes, and then we'll crash chiller down to pitching. So hopefully you enjoy that Lager Brew Day. Um, here it is. Uh, it's only been in the keg for probably well, about two weeks, so um, it's finally got a bit of carb on it. I just gave this one a bit of a shake and then I've had it low and slow. It's not a huge amount of heat on it, um, but you're pretty happy with the clarity so early on. I haven't used gelatin or anything like that. As I say, a bit of cold. Um, it's a lager. I didn't put a lot of pops on that, uh, a lot of Pacifica and uh, Rewaka, Rako, Rewaka, can't remember. It'll be in the video. And, um, yeah, I'm getting quite a bit of malt on there. I think that was the Munich, uh, which I added to this one. So there's a little bit of Munich in it, which is giving it a really nice kind of malt aroma. Not a huge amount of sulfur, um, but as I say, I can smell nothing. Just really nice. Clean, crisp, everything you'd expect from a lager. Um, probably a tad more malty than the previous lagers that I've done. And um, definitely less carbonated than the lager that uh, Mike from Hard Yard Brewing tried the other day. So, um, cheers guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for uh, sitting for a waffle and uh, a lager. Bloody, bloody delicious. I love them. Mm -hmm.